This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Welcome to the Dollamore Daily. I'm Brittany Page filling in for Jesse Dollamore while he fills in for David Pakman over on David Pakman's channel on YouTube. So if you're missing Jesse, you can go and find him there every day making content on David Pakman's channel. And you can find me here filling in for Jesse every day while he's doing that. You may remember that I filled in for Jesse while he was recovering from his colon cancer surgery. I had a lot of fun doing that. It was great to interact with you guys. And I just wanna shout out Jesse for letting me sit in again and shout out you for letting me, letting me sit in this chair as well. You know, I started my own YouTube channel, so you can go and find that. You search my name, it'll be in the, the link below and you can click, subscribe, check out my videos that I've been doing, give me some likes, some comments and join the growing passionate audience that I have over there that I appreciate so much. So today I'm gonna talk about the Tyree Nichols video that was released on Friday. And I'm not going to play it. I'm not gonna play any parts of it. In fact, it is disgusting, it is horrifying, it is shameful that this continues to happen and in the face of quote unquote reforms such as body cameras. But instead what body cameras have done is just record horrifying police brutality and killings that we then stream on our TVs and watch while we continue to see no meaningful systemic change in policing. And I want, you, I want you to seek out videos of Tyree Nichols that are not the video of the end of his life. Uh, there's one in particular that I will link to in the comments where he was actually interviewed in front of a California DMV after wait, waiting hours in line in the heat. And he just seems like a, a beautiful human being and it is, it's a tragedy and I'm, I'm thinking about his family every single day, those who love him and the collective trauma and fear that has yet again been inflicted because of this police killing. I wanna focus on three elements of this story today. The first is that the police gave contradicting impossible to follow commands, which should officially do away with this argument of just comply and nothing will happen to you. The second one is that the police lied again about this interaction, everything starting from what prompted their initial interaction with Tyree Nichols to the official report that they gave about what transpired. And then three, I'm going to encourage you to join the fight to end police involvement in traffic enforcement. So. Keep those things in mind. I did do a channel on the police killings in America in the year 2022, just a few weeks ago. So if you wanna see me do a deeper dive on some different issues than I'm, what I'm gonna touch on here, I would say go and check that out. But I want you to remember that police killed an average of more than three people a day or 100 people every month in 2022. More Americans were killed by the police in 2022 than in any year since they started tracking the data in 2013. So this problem is continuing to get worse. And of course, there are racial disparities in these numbers. I wanna read now from this Guardian article summarizing that. Black people were 24% of those killed last year while making up only 13% of the population. From 2013 to 2022, black residents were three times more likely to be killed by US police than white people. The inequality is particularly severe in some cities, including Minneapolis, where police killed black residents at a rate 28 times higher than white residents. And Chicago, where the rate was 25 times higher, mapping police violence reported. And according to Mapping Police Violence, there's even a racial disparity in the people who are killed by the police who are running away, who are killed in the middle of running away. One in every three people killed by police was running away, driving away, or otherwise trying to flee. Black and brown people were more likely to be killed while fleeing. And that's what we saw in the Tyree Nichols case. And who wouldn't flee, by the way? Who wouldn't run? when two unmarked cars box you in, 
come at you, pull you out of the car, immediately start aggressively yelling, contradicting commands at you that you can't, that are impossible to follow because they're contradicting what they're asking you to do and immediately leveling it up with the aggression. Who wouldn't run in that situation? And I want to get into those contradicting commands because maybe you've watched the video, maybe you haven't, but the, the New York Times did an analysis of these commands that were in this video, and this is remarkable. The New York Times found that the body camera footage shows that officers shouted at least 71 commands during the approximately 13-minute period before they reported over the radio that Mr. Nichols was officially in custody. The orders were issued at two locations, one near Mr. Nichols' vehicle and the other in the area he fled to and where he would be severely beaten. The orders were often simultaneous and contradictory. Officers commanded Mr. Nichols to show his hands even as they were holding his hands. They told him to get on the ground even when he was on the ground and they ordered him to reposition himself even when they had control of his body. So are we done with this just comply nonsense? Are we done with just do what you're told and everything will be okay? What Tyree Nichols knew is that he could not trust these police officers with his life. And what transpired makes that very clear. I would run too. And I hope that more people watching this situation, watching this video, will start to understand that, that there was no way to comply. There was no way to do what they were asking him to do. They immediately got out of the car and were aggressive and leveled up the situation to a point where he was right to try to get away. And I wanna continue reading from this New York Times article. Experts say the actions of the Memphis police officers were an egregious example of a long-standing problem in policing in which officers physically punish civilians for perceived disrespect or disobedience, sometimes called a contempt of cop. The practice was notoriously prevalent decades ago. Well, and apparently a practice that still exists today. You may have heard of a phrase called the run tax. This is something that uh, police will talk about where if a suspect is running away, then once they catch up with them, there's an additional punishment to be doled out. The run tax. You get uh, violently assaulted, basically, as a little bonus because they had to chase you. Yeah, they have a phrase for that, the police, a run tax, because their, their behavior, their abusive, violent, and illegal behavior has catchphrases, just like they're, they're lying, by the way. They have phrases for that. I don't know if you remember this New York Times article that came out about testa lying. And in it, they quoted a cop describing what testa lying means. Quote, you take the truth and stretch it out a little bit. Lying. This is specifically in the context of courtroom testimony. When they are testifying, they will often lie under oath when they're supposed to tell the truth. So, if you can't trust them when they're giving their courtroom testimony, when they are sworn to uphold the truth, uh, you certainly can't trust them when they're giving a report of what transpired. And that's the case here for Tyree Nichols as well, because this is what they said about the quote unquote confrontation that happened that night. According to the statement released by police, they wrote that a quote confrontation occurred following a traffic stop. Nichols fled on foot and then another confrontation occurred. Afterward, the suspect complained of having shortness of breath. The suspect was transported to St. Francis Hospital in critical condition. No information about the punching in the face, no information about the kicking in the head, no information about the pepper spray, no information about the 22 minutes that it took before the ambulance arrived to administer care to someone who was clearly on the verge of death after being beaten by five police officers. Even the information that they provided about the reason that they stopped Tyree Nichols was a lie. They said it was because of a suspicion of reckless driving. Well, the Memphis Police Department police chief has come out and said, there's no evidence of that. Yeah, she can't find any evidence of that in reviewing 
camera footage on the street, in reviewing whatever she can, there is no evidence that they even had any reason to stop Tyree Nichols. So where does this leave us? Other than in a nonstop cycle of police brutality that keeps getting filmed and screened for us on a regular basis without any movement towards systemic change. Listen, even uh, quote unquote, liberals get upset by the phrase defund the police. And I'm, I'm not sure why, because the argument behind it really is just about redirecting resources from these inflated police budgets where they continue to behave like this and directing it to community care. So we're talking about disinvestment in terrorism of communities particularly communities of color, and investing that in other resources. And like I said, you can check out a video I did from a few weeks ago that talks specifically about investing in alternatives to policing, like crisis response teams and mental health specifically. But I wanna talk about another element of this, and that is uh, reducing police involvement in traffic enforcement. Now, this is something that's been talked about for years. This is not a new idea. Several states have attempted to reduce police involvement in traffic enforcement, including in states like Virginia, California, and Philadelphia. This, of course, in response to data points like this one from the Washington Post, about 11% of all fatal shootings by police in 2015 occurred during traffic stops. Black people accounted for a disproportionate share of those deaths. We can use automation. You've already seen that, I'm sure, where you live. Traffic cameras that can just take a picture of your license plate if you're speeding, if you run a red light. There can be new departments created within a state's Department of Transportation that dispatches civilians, non-armed people to handle traffic enforcement. You do not need police to do this. You don't. I don't know if this sounds like a radical idea to people, but it's not. And New York Attorney General Letitia James actually floated this idea of removing the NYPD from routine traffic stops in 2020. The organization Data for Progress actually tested support for this idea with a survey in that same year. In it, they found a majority of New York likely voters support removing traffic enforcement from police jurisdiction. So widespread support in New York, probably I would say in other states, maybe even across the country, something certainly that I think should be looked into. But maybe you're watching this and thinking, well, that's a radical position. It's obvious that we cannot continue to move forward as we have been. Body cameras did not save Tyree Nichols. Increased police budgets did not save Tyree Nichols. The cops being a member of an elite team within the department did not save Tyree Nichols. It's obvious that we need systemic change and we need it now. Otherwise, we're going to continue to see beautiful human beings like Tyree Nichols be killed on camera. And I don't think that's acceptable. What do you think? I'd love to know. You can call, leave a voicemail, or, or you can send an email to daily at dollamore.com. Getting a little choked up. I think it's hard not to in this situation after seeing the video and knowing what communities are continuing to go through in the face of this violence. We would really appreciate you supporting the channel, and we are grateful for you being here. As Jesse would say, be genuine and take care of one another.